This rifle was the firepower of the Minuteman of the American Revolution. It was loaded, ready at a moment's notice for action against the enemy. And this represents firepower for the modern Air Force. Named Minuteman for its predecessor, it too is loaded and poised and ready. So meet the newest of Air Force weapon systems, the ICBM Minuteman. In the vast complexity of Cape Canaveral, work is progressing on a hole in the ground. As excavations go, it is relatively small. But that cavity in the face of the land, that hole we call a silo, is the forerunner of other silos, many others. Silos holding in their underground sentry boxes powerful missiles in great numbers. Their name, Minuteman, our ace in the hole, an important part of our overall strength whose purpose it is to deter any aggressor from launching an attack. Some of our strength will be carried beneath the sea in atomic-powered submarines. Much of our strength flies over and beyond the oceans. With the big nuclear punch in the bomb racks of the Strategic Air Command Special Delivery Long Range Bombers. And even their long arm is extended by missiles which can be launched 500 miles and more from any given target. We have the strike back power of intermediate range ballistic missiles, Thor, deployed in the United Kingdom. And on our own soil, we base the heavy missiles, the ICBMs, the upcoming Titan, and Atlas. The United States has no chip on its shoulder. Nine. We do not want war. Eight. But we are spending billions for weapons. Seven. Weapons we hope never to use. Six. Peace is expensive. Five. But that's no surprise. Four. Freedom has never been free. Three, two, one, zero. What it adds up to is this. Our national security is the largest and most important business in the world. It is also a competitive business. And the competition can be deadly. Costs are high because the stakes are high. And so getting more deterrence for the dollar means digging small silos underground today for our Minuteman missiles even though not very long ago, the word silo wasn't even in the military dictionary. Five years ago, our ballistic missile program was just beginning to feel its strength. But the responsible managers of our national security business were looking beyond successes of the immediate present. They knew that the costs of competition could easily soar beyond our ability to pay because the initial price tag of a missile is only a small factor. More than 70% of the total cost is for facilities, ground support equipment, and operating expenses. Our planners knew that those costs would be held down if we could devise missiles with solid fuel engines. There was, however, a problem. There were no solid fuel engines large enough even for a medium-range missile. They didn't exist not even on the drawing board. Compared to Atlas or Titan, the revolutionary new missile would seem small. It would have three power units or stages to deliver the nuclear warhead. Small silos for the small missiles would save on construction costs, on costs of elevators, erectors, and similar support equipment. Because solid fuel engines are relatively simple, almost complete automation could be achieved. 
and automation with a central control to monitor many missiles would reduce manpower by 85% and mean great savings in operating costs. More savings would be gained because solid fuel missiles can be kept in the alert position for long periods of time with minimum maintenance. And to protect them against attack, a greater degree of hardening would be possible with those small silos. This would ensure survivability, which in turn would permit installations being closer together. That, in turn, would drastically reduce logistic and communication costs involved in widely dispersed surface deployment. And the solid fuel missiles could be launched with less than a minute's warning, giving us almost instantaneous strike back power. And as concepts of our solid fuel weapon system were taking form, our first liquid fuel, heavy ICBM, Atlas, was successfully launched. On this 17th day of December 1957, missile men knew that Atlas and Titan would continue to be irreplaceable sinews of our deterrent power, ready to hurl their warheads as far as 9,000 miles or to boost satellites into orbit for our military and scientific projects in space. But the Minuteman weapon system, which would give us the total numbers to match our competition at a price we could afford, had to advance concurrently with all the other phases of deterrence. It advanced slowly at first, but after a series of successful tests, there was good reason to hope that a full-scale Minuteman could be successfully fired from a life-sized silo. In September 1958, the Air Force Ballistic Missile Division sets a deadline. They will have a full-scale Minuteman ready to be launched from a full-scale silo in exactly one year. And so, a 12-month countdown begins. And before that 12-month deadline can be met, there will be many thousands of tests in many areas. In December, the Department of Defense announces that Minuteman has become an approved weapon system program. The members of the Air Force Science Industry Team work on different aspects of developing the new weapon system and of finding the answers to the new technical problems involved in designing and building solid fuel rockets of unprecedented size. At New Mexico's Holloman Air Force Base, the world's fastest sled helps check the accuracy and durability of Minuteman's guidance system. May, as two-thirds of the countdown is completed, more progress is reported by members of that Air Force Science Industry Team. Boeing, up in Washington. Thiokol in Utah. Avco in Massachusetts. Hercules in Delaware. Air Force bases in New Mexico and Tennessee. In California, Autonetics and Aerojet General. It truly is an all-American team. Month nine, June. A child is born in nine months. Missiles take longer. And a missile must be ready to defend the nation the first day of its official life. Out on the Mojave Desert, it gets warm in July. 120 in the shade at Edwards Air Force Base, if you can find any shade. But time isn't measured by degrees of Fahrenheit. And on September 15, 1959, the exact date chosen a year earlier a full-scale model is ready to be fired from a full-scale silo. Nobody wants this first test model to fly its full trajectory. They merely want it to rise a few hundred feet from the silo and then, held captive, fall back to work. Test number one, completely successful. The deadline has been met. That's good. But Minuteman has many deadlines to meet. 18 tests are scheduled. But by May 1960, the unbroken string of successes permits the Air Force to cancel the last 10 test launches. That saves millions of dollars. And it saves time, even more precious than money. 
time, early morning of the 1st of February, 1961. At Cape Canaveral, the Air Force is ready for Minuteman's initial full-scale flight test. The first of the month is an appropriate date. For the first time in the history of the entire world, a solid propellant intercontinental ballistic missile would be fired. It would be the first ICBM to have its first flight test in a complete configuration. All three stages and re-entry vehicle separation would have to work in perfect synchronization the very first crack out of the box. Time of launch, 11 a.m. Within 15 minutes, the Air Force could report outstanding success. All three stages functioned as programmed. The re-entry vehicle hit the target as programmed some 4,600 miles downrange. A truly remarkable achievement, accomplished only two years after the Department of Defense gave the Air Force the official go-ahead for Minuteman. In less than another two years, SAC will have Minuteman missiles in underground sentry boxes. They may stand quiet and ready beneath the wheat fields in the heartland of our country. Or maybe they will protect the peace from the hidden valleys between great mountains and possibly a squadron of these up-to-the-minute minute men will help let freedom reign from somewhere beneath the desert. They will be doing the job they were designed to do, providing not only the most deterrence for the dollar, but also the numbers and almost instantaneous strike-back power, which, in the event of an attack, will help give our counter-force the strength to prevail and to win. Always ready, always on guard, Minuteman, our ace in the hole.